Now, this is how Ilya Shapiro got in trouble. Because Ilya Shapiro put out a tweet that basically said, look, the most qualified liberal appeals court judge who should be nominated to the Supreme Court is a woman, and her name is Sari Srinivasan. Srinivasan. Sari Srinivasan. And, and Ilya Shapiro, who is a, call him a libertarian, I think, said, if you are a progressive liberal, the judge that is most qualified, that has going to be the best for you as a liberal Democrat, would be Sri Srinivasan. And she happens to be Indian of Sri Lanka, and in terms of skin color, pretty dark. But she doesn't count. She can't be nominated to the Supreme Court. She will not be placed on the Supreme Court, even though she's the most qualified candidate, not by skin color, not by sex, but by ideology and objective qualifications for legal scholars. She won't because she's not black enough. She won't because she's not black from the right side of the world. She won't because her people were not enslaved, at least not in America. Who knows what was done to them in previous generations in India or wherever it is she comes from. But this is the insanity, insanity of racism. Uh, she is Ch Chelanese, so off the coast of India, Chelanese. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Chelanese is. I'm sure the. I'm sure the. I don't know what culture. I mean, culturally, they're probably very much like India. I don't know. That would be interesting. I I don't know much about. The people. In. Ceylon. Sri Lanka. But my point is, who cares? <laughs> who cares where exactly she come from? What matters is her qualifications. Okay, Sri Lanka is Ceylon. Thank you, Wanda Freeman. I appreciate that. I, I suspected that, but it, I'm glad um, I wasn't going to say it. I'm glad you... Um, Qualified there. Tamil culture, I'm told, is the culture of South India, which is Sri Lankan. But it doesn't matter. She's an American. I don't know if she was born in America, but she's an American and an enormously qualified judge. And she won't go to the Supreme Court, not because of her, anything she has done, said, written, now, because she's not qualified, she's the most qualified, at least according to Ilya Shapiro, but because she's not from Africa. Uh, well, that's not even true, because her ancestors are not from Africa. We live in a sick culture that produces this kind of result. Now, unfortunately for Ilya, and Ilya, you know, is a, uh, just to give you a sense of who Ilya is, he is a legal scholar. Uh, he has worked for the Cato Institute for many years. He has just been appointed the executive director of the Georgetown Center for the Constitution, which is a very prestigious position. Um, Georgetown is a top law school, uh, and of course, in, in the heart of DC. And, uh, you know, Ilya's a great guy. I follow him on Twitter, I follow a lot of his stuff. He's a, he's a good guy, he's super smart. I, I don't agree with him on everything, but he's super smart. And, uh, and really interesting. So he said, so in a series of tweets, he criticized uh, uh, Joe Biden's pledge to consider only black women for the soon vacant Supreme Court. And in the course of arguing that this judge, Judge Siri, whose name I can't pronounce, would be far and away the best pick for Biden, Shapiro tweeted, and this was his big 
This is how he got into trouble. Shapiro tweeted, but alas, he doesn't fit into the latest intersectionality hierarchy. So we'll get less a black woman. Now, what he means here is, I guess Siri is a, is a man. So he, it is, I, I thought it was a woman. Okay, so it's a black, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, man from Sri Lanka is this uh, Pelin Kojic. I thought it was a woman for some reason. Anyway, um, what got him in trouble was we'll get a lesser black woman. Now, Ilya is not arguing that black women are lesser. He's arguing here, what he's saying here is, that the best candidate of all, of any color skin, which is a bizarre way to put it, for a progressive leftist is Sri, this guy Sri, right? And as a consequence of that, you're going to get somebody lesser who's a black woman, not because black women are lesser, but because Biden has said he'll only choose a black woman. But you can see how this is easily misunderstood, and Shapiro knew this and deleted his tweet quickly and apologized for it and all did all the right things, but it was too late, too late. The dean of the law school flipped out, students flipped out, uh, you know, they piled on Shapiro, uh, they called him a racist, uh, which is, if you, if you know anything about Ilya Shapiro and you follow his work, you know that is ludicrous. Uh, he was placed on the day, today he was supposed to start yesterday, no, sorry, on Tuesday he was supposed to start as the executive director of this new center, he was placed on administrative leave, uh, there's going to be an investigation about whether he violated the policies and expectations of professional conduct and so on. All because some people chose to read a tweet that he wrote in a way that is clearly not intended. And that he criticized Biden's choices. Now, this is Georgetown University. Georgetown University, a university that took no discriminatory action in 2018, when a feminist professor said, and I'm quoting, right, quoting, that entitled white men who supported Supreme Court nomination of Brett Kavanaugh, but the entitled white men deserve miserable deaths while we castrate their corpses and feed them to the swine. Indeed, when some students demanded something be done about this professor, Georgetown went out of the way to defend that female professor's free speech rights. So you can call white men, you can, you can claim they deserve death, and you can describe how you're going to castrate them and feed their corpses to swine, and that's okay. But to argue for a colorblind Supreme Court, to argue for a president to choose the most qualified candidate rather than the candidate who has a particular color skin, and even there, a particular heritage with a particular color skin, because who knows if, if, if Sri is more black or less black than whoever Biden ultimately nominates. That deserves condemnation. I mean, this is just unbelievable. And this is not idiots. This is the dean of the Georgetown University Law Center. It is absurd and ridiculous. Right? By the way, just to give you a sense of the students who are demanding that Shapiro be um, fired, they're claiming that they've been hurt and they've demanded catered food and they want a space in which to cry while conducting a sit-in demanding that he be fired. Uh, the dean has told them that he's going to find a place for them to cry, don't worry, 
And uh, it, whatever food they order in, the school will reimburse them. I mean, we've gone so soft as a culture. Sit-in should be illegal. Never mind giving them a safe space to cry and providing them with food. Amy Wax is not good. Amy Wax is a racist of the right. They are racist of the right. And Wax is at Penn Law. And she is horrible. She is horrible. And this is the problem. That if you're going to have racists of the left, you're going to get racists of the right. And to a large extent, the racists of the left are response to the racists of the right. And generally... You have racists on all sides. Amy Wax's attitude towards immigrants, the way she talks about immigrants, what she says about immigrants is disgusting and despicable, and yes, deserves the title of racist. I, I, I would have nothing to do with her. I wouldn't fire her, but... I wouldn't have anything to do with her. Let me show you this segment um, from um, Joe Rogan and uh, Jordan Peterson. I mean, this is just, this is the, the crazy world in which we live. This is the kind of stuff that we're getting to, the kind of attitude, the kind of uh, stuff that we're deteriorating to because of this obsession with race that appears to be on all sides. All right, I'm going to play you. This is, uh, it's one minute long, so we're going to play this. Oops. No, we're not. We're of intolerance and bigotry and anger and hateful sexual uh, oppression. What did Michael prejudice. Eric Dyson call you? Uh, an a mean, mean, angry and white mean, man. Yeah, and and a mean, angry white man. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You're not mean at all. Yeah, yeah. That's what's dumb about that statement. It's you're not mean at all. It's I uh, am white. Actually, that's a. <laughs> but that's part of the problem. Once you start calling people angry white people, identifying them by their skin color. And, and, and making a deal out of people's skin color, well, they're going to respond. And now skin color becomes a thing. It gains importance. It gains currency. And now you get into stupid discussions like this. A lie, too. <laughs> I'm kind of tan. So am I white? How tanned am I? Am I more tanned when I'm in Puerto Rico than when I'm in Toronto, Canada? Does tanning count? How dark is dark? What is white? And he was actually not black. Tan, he was what sort the of fuck brown. Am I? And he's not black now. So Dyson's not black. He's just brown. Is black just a figurative to coming from from some ancestry in Africa? How much blackness counts as black? Because I'm I'm darker than you. Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But yeah now Joe is dark. So. Maybe Joe's not white, but what is white? Who qualifies? Where do we set the criteria? Is there pigment meter? Is there a meter that defines who's white, who's black? The whole thing is stupid. You know, in Brazil, for a long time, if you, uh, I think to this day, if you have one, they talk about blood, right? one uh, ounce of uh, white blood, if you have one white ancestor, you're considered white. In America, if you have one black ancestor, you're considered black. But all of that is bullshit. We're all mutts to some degree or another, and it doesn't matter. It makes no difference. It's insignificant. It has no meaning. Oh, neither of us are white. Well, I'm Italian. And mostly. he was brown. Yeah, Italian whites, uh, certainly the British didn't think so. They categorized them as a different race 
and they were dark skinned and they were looked down upon. Brown, not black. Well, so Zhao says it's not exactly like that, but that you know, it's somewhat like that. It's not exactly like that, but it's somewhat like that. Where do you define? Where's the boundary? What defines you? On what side? Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's this, really the, the weird. The black and white thing is so strange yeah, because like, the shades are so... Tan and brown. There's such a spectrum of shades of people. Exactly. Unless you're talking to someone who is like 100% African from the darkest place where they're not wearing any clothes all day and they've developed all that melanin to protect themselves from the sun. You know, it, even the term... He got into trouble with that from the darkest place, naked all day. He got, he got into trouble for saying that. But it's about melatonin. It, not melatonin. <laughs> it's about skin pigment. That's all it matters. That's all it is. It's skin pigment. And yet we're taking skin pigment and we're turning it into something important, something significant, something that we evaluate people based on, something that gets you or doesn't get you into the Supreme Court. Melanin, thank you. That's the deciding. How much melanin do you have in the skin? Categorizes you. The whole thing is absurd. I mean, and it comes from the days of slavery and bigotry and Jim Crow laws. And we should be bigger than that and better than that and more grown up than that and more rational than that. You know, it, even the term black is weird. It's a, mm. it's a, and when you use it for people that are literally my color, it becomes very strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. this is true. A voice of in. So anyway, they got into big trouble for that one. Um, you can probably see why, even though, you know, they're absolutely right. And again, I get the sensitivity of people who are discriminated against because of the color of their skin. So they make the color of their skin a big deal because they've been discriminated based on that their whole life. But the rest of us, it's just inexcusable. It's logically absurd to place a precept, a percept, about color, about skin pigmentation, as your standard for evaluating people. It's racist. And it's despicable. It's despicable when Joe Biden does it. It's despicable when the students at Georgetown do it. It's despicable when Whoopi does it. Whoopi only counts racism when it affects black versus white. Well, it turns out that other people have different views of racism, Whoopi, and she's suffering the consequences of that. Now, there's a sense in which Whoopi Goldberg is right. Since there isn't such a thing as race, it's a made-up thing, and Nazis were anti-Jewish. They hated Jews. They killed Jews. They slaughtered Jews. They also hated blacks. If there were more blacks in the environment, they would have slaughtered them too. They hated gypsies. They killed gypsies left and right. But, you know, the, 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 this, these arguments about a concept that has ultimately no legitimacy is horrific. And the more we emphasize it, the more we get away from Martin Luther King's vision of a colorblind society, the more we get away from a society of individualists, the more we get away from intermarriage, which is, I think, the best thing that's happening in the world today, the rise of intermarriage. So Joao says, you're an actually light brown skinned people with slightly black facial features are classified as black over here. It wasn't always like this. I know it wasn't, but it's the trend in Brazil right now. Again, copying the U.S. Brazil was 
better than the U.S. with regard to this, I think, in the past, and it's people are copying the U.S. We're becoming more racist, not less racist, more focused on this. And again, you're getting it from the right, from people like Richard who want to make a big deal out of group differences. This is what's important in life. And you're getting it from the left, Black Lives Matter. We got to elect a black woman to the Supreme Court. I mean, our, what matters is our genetic makeup, and that matters almost entirely for our health, not for anything else. It doesn't determine our moral character. It doesn't determine our productivity. It doesn't determine the choices we make, the kind of persons we are. It determines elements of our intelligence, but even there, I don't think the most important ones. And there's just no such thing as race in genetics. There's lineage, there's place where you came from, and if you do a 23andMe, you'll find that you come from a lot of different places. A lot of different places. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.